Okay, here is our tutorial on uh, rays and angles as part of our introduction to geometry unit. Um, if you would like to pause your screen at any time to get down definitions, uh, I would suggest that for you to make sure you don't miss anything. But I am going to talk through the definitions here. First things first, you can't talk about an angle without a ray. A lot of you know what angles are. You know, some of you look at them as the corners of objects. Some of you look at where lines might meet, things like that. Uh, but you can't really talk about angles without a ray. A ray is a half of a line. So you can take a look at our picture here and see what I mean by a half of a line. We've got one end point, and in this case it's A. And then we've got another line, another point in here, B, that just indicates um, which direction I'm heading in. So we've got one end point, and then I continue in the direction of B infinitely. That's what we mean by saying half of a line, because I do extend infinitely in one direction, just not both directions. Um, we call this thing ray AB, where I use both points that are on the line, or I can even use the symbol that's got the uh, the small version of a ray, you know, notice it's got one arrow. Now, here's the important thing. In line segments and lines, the order of how you wrote that did not matter. You know, ray, uh, line AB or line BA was the same. But a ray, the first letter that you list is the end point. So ray AB and ray BA are actually not the same ray. The first letter listed has to be the end point. So make sure that you make that note in your notes and when you start to name rays. Okay, next we're going to talk about using rays to create angles. So an angle occurs when two rays have a common end point. So if you take a look at this example of angle HIJ, I could also call it angle JIH. I could also call it angle I. I could even call it angle three. Uh, three of these, sorry, all four of these names, notice that we have um, an emphasis on this point here, which is called the vertex. The vertex is actually where a lot of the attention or action happens. It's the corner. It's the middle. It's where the two rays intersect to make this new object an angle. Um, if I use three letters, notice I go kind of in this um, tracing order where each way, either H-I-J or J-I-H, the I continues to be in the middle. Because again, the way that I say the name traces the shape of the angle. Um, I could also, if there was no other angles in the vicinity, I could just use the vertex and call it angle I, and everybody would know I'm talking about that angle. Or if there's so many angles in one place and you don't want to get confused and using three letters was starting to make a little bit of a, a mess of things, you can use numbers. A lot of times we'll put numbers right there at the vertex. So this could be angle three. But it's all about what is the best name for that. So if there are multiple angles with the same vertex, you wouldn't call them just by their vertex because there could be some confusion. All right, next, maybe a little bit of a review concept for you, maybe not. We have four types of angles that we'll discuss, and all these angles are categorized uh, according to their measurement. Now, um, I'm actually going to do this a little bit out of order as I want to focus on the right angle, first things first, and then a straight angle. If you think about a straight angle, it looks like a straight line. It looks like what happened is we took the two rays and opened them all the way up to where they're facing in opposite directions. And that's exactly what ends up happening. And what that does is in Euclidean geometry, the type of geometry we're talking about right now, the maximum angle measure is 180 degrees. So the largest an angle is is when it's opened all the way up. So if you could think about it real quick, uh, the smallest an angle would be is if you close them on top of each other, then that would be a zero degree angle and it would just look like a ray. So it might just look something like this where, you know, you would have all of these things kind of laying on top of each other, something like that. That's what a zero degree angle would look like right there, just a ray. So then a 180 degree angle looks something like this where it's opened all the way up. So then that brings in the right angle. Right angle is opening halfway or half of 180 degrees. 
90 degrees. We have this um, square or rectangle indicator right here at the vertex that indicates that it is indeed 90 degrees. You don't have to measure it. You can go ahead and make note that it's 90 degrees. But again, it's kind of halfway opened to 180 degrees. And everybody seems to get compared to this 90 degree angle. So an acute angle is when your measure of that angle is less than 90 degrees. So if my angle is smaller than 90 degrees, it might look something like this. That would be considered an acute angle. And an obtuse angle is when I'm greater than 90 degrees. So my angle is opened larger than that halfway or 90 degrees. So you want to make sure that you understand about straight angles and right angles as references. And then comes the, am I smaller than 90 acute? Am I larger than 90 obtuse? Okay, now we're going to practice making sure that we name angles correctly. Um, again, we did leave a note for you here that says uh, make sure the vertex point is always in the middle. So to first things first, you should always identify where the vertex is. And in this angle, it's right there at B. So B is our vertex. The two rays that make up the angle are BA and BC. So ray BA and ray BC. Notice again the first letter is the end point and we're heading in the direction of that second letter. Uh, if I name this angle I can name it angle ABC or I can name it angle or I can name it angle CBA or if there's no other angle I can name it angle B. Notice again that the vertex is in the center of my three letters or it's the one that I use if I name using one letter. Okay, so a little bit of practice for you here. You can name that angle. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about um, some additional angle characteristics and um, angle concepts. So the first is an angle bisector. Bi meaning to, sect meaning cut. So uh, something, a line, a ray, a line segment that cuts an angle into two congruent parts. That's what an, an angle bisector is. Next uh, is adjacent angles. These are angles that share a common side. So angles that share a common side, that would be something like angle ADG and angle BDG as both of these two angles are side by side, but they share this side in between. Now, angles being adjacent don't, doesn't mean that they have any sort of measurement relationship, like they're congruent, they're equal, or, you know, one's half the size of the other, something like that. There's not that. All adjacent says is that they're side by side and they share a side like that. Now, the next angle concept is incredibly powerful. It's the idea of vertical angles. Vertical angles are two angles that are formed by intersecting lines and are non-adjacent. So two non-adjacent angles that are formed by intersecting lines. And here's the amazing relationship coming up. So an example here would be something like angle GDB, this angle right here, and angle ADH, this angle right here. So these two angles where I put the question marks, those are the ones that I'm talking about. That relationship there would be called vertical angles. Now think about this just for a second. If I took this angle here and this angle here and I added those two together, they would add up and make this entire line here. So that would mean that they add up to 180 degrees. Okay, well then if I took this angle here and this angle here, they too form a straight line or a straight angle and they would add up to 180 degrees. Well gosh, if you go back to the two angles that we were looking at that are vertical angles, they both using the same angle ADG would make a line here or a line here both of those angles and so if both of those angles can use the same angle to get to 180 degrees well these two angles must have been the same measurement because they both require the same angle to get to 180 degrees so that's where we get to say that vertical angles are the exact same measurement or they are congruent vertical angles are congruent 
Another pair of vertical angles in this scenario would be here and here. Again, non-adjacent formed by intersecting lines, and these two would be the same exact measure. You need to pause your screen really quickly to get the definitions for the previous three concepts. Please go ahead. Our last concept with angles is this idea of linear pair. Linear has to do with lines and pair is two. So that's literally two angles that form a line. Two angles that form a line. So something like angle ADH, we'll call that angle one. And angle BDH, we'll call that angle two. Well, angle one and angle two, if you added those together, you would get that big, big angle there or this straight angle, which is a line. So a linear pair are two angles that are adjacent, side by side, share a side, and form a line. Use your screen to write down the definition and label your picture. Please go right ahead. To use the two examples on the screen right now to help us discover something called the angle addition postulate. So if I told you that the measure of this angle KNL here is 110 degrees and the measure of this angle here LNM, LNM was 25 degrees and I wanted to know what's the measure of KNM, this large angle together, what would you do to figure that out? Well, hopefully your instinct would kick in and you'd say, we'll just add this and this to get the whole thing. 110 plus 65 equals 175 degrees. If I do the same concept down here, I told you that the large angle KNM was a total of 155 degrees and this small acute angle LNM was 30 degrees. What would I do to figure out KNL? I would have to do a little bit of working backwards here. So what they're saying is angle KNL plus 30 degrees should equal 155 degrees. Well, what would I do to go backwards? Well, I'd have to subtract. Subtract 30 from both sides of my equation here. And angle KNL should be what's left over or the difference, and that would be 125 degrees. We could check our work by adding 125 and 30, and that does add up to 155. Angle addition postulate tells us that we can add the measures of adjacent angles in order to find the measure of the angle they form. So this picture should tell the whole story. This angle, angle 1, ABD, and this angle, angle 2, CBD, if you add those two angles together, that should give you the large angle, ABC. Two additional vocabulary words that go with the angle addition postulate. If we say that two angles have a relationship of being complementary, it means that their measurements have a sum of 90 degrees. Now, the example we've got here for you are are definitely two angles that um, that form a right angle. But just to keep in mind, complementary angles is talking all about their measurements adding up to 90. They don't have to be adjacent angles. These are adjacent angles, but they don't have to be. If I just have two angles that add up to 90 degrees, they get to be complementary. But the word complementary should make the number 90 pop into your head. Then we have this concept of supplementary. If two angles measurements add together to give you 180 degrees, we say that those two angles are supplementary. Here you've got angle Y and 77 degrees. They form a linear pair. These two angles make that straight line, which is 180 degrees. So these two angles, if you add them together, you get 180 degrees. That's a supplementary relationship. Again, supplementary angles do not have to be adjacent. They just have to have measurements that add up to 180 degrees. You can kind of apply these two concepts with um, what we've been talking about with angle addition and linear pairs and complementary and supplementary. All those things go together. If you take a look at this picture here, I kind of indicated that there's a linear pair relationship because of this straight line here. So that means that these two angles should add up to 180 degrees. So that's our equation. 58 plus 6x plus 2 equals 180 degrees. Solve that equation. You'll know what x is equal to. Over here, this square indicates that these two angles add up to 90 degrees. So these two angles, if you add them together, you should set them equal to 90 degrees. Solve for x, and that's how you can get 
whatever x is equal to.